What is up, guys, and welcome to the One Night in Bangkok podcast. My name is Eric, and tonight I'm very happy to have some special guests joining me. I'm here with Johnny from Johnny. There's something happening YouTube channel, uh, as well as his girlfriend Sam and Ying is also here joining us as well. Links for everyone and everything we discuss will be in the description. And guys, make sure you drop your comments and questions below, and we can answer them. Also, if you're living in Thailand or if you're traveling here soon, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We've got so many cool people coming on the next few weeks, and I don't want you to miss anything. So, without further ado, Johnny, you have over 400 videos on your YouTube channel, and you've been here for how long? Um, I moved here. In 2010, um, I was coming back from a, a trip in Europe, which I kind of had a disagreement with my family there with. Um, so I pretty much said, "Okay, well, you guys continue on." And um, I was going to return back to Australia, but I, had, I rang Qantas and said, "How much would it be to change my flight to say Bangkok or Phuket?" I really wanted to go to Phuket, um, and they just said a hundred dollars. So I said, "Okay, let's book it." So I booked it. And I went to Phuket for like two weeks, I think, and that was it. I was addicted. Yeah, you, you caught I mean? the bug. It, it's funny because like pretty much every foreigner I meet here that ends up living here, it's always some story like this. It's nobody just plans to go and live in Thailand. Something no. always happens. Uh, what did you know about Thailand or Phuket Nothing. before you came here? Yeah, right. No, I knew about the. Oops. Okay, and the lady boys, right? <laughs> I didn't know much about them actually. Which I didn't, you know, I wasn't looking, but, but um, no, I didn't know much about Thailand. I knew that, I don't know. I, I knew nothing. And, and that's what I I think kind of excited me, made, made it more exciting because I didn't, I didn't research anything. So when I went, I turned up to Phuket and I went out my first night in Bangalore Road. It was just like, oh my God, where have I walked into? Right. Because you're from where? I'm from the Gold Coast of okay. Australia. Okay. And I'm sure it was a little bit of a, a culture shock. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cause it was my first overseas holiday, really. You know what I mean? And, and it was like 30, I was what? 32. And, uh, how long after that did you say, F it, I'm going to just move there? Three months. Only three months. Yeah. Cause I had a business and boat detail and fiberglass repairs and for super yachts and stuff. Um, but I'd been offered a lot of people were trying to buy that business. So I knew I had a buyer if I wanted to. And I just had enough of um, Australia, pretty much. I, 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 yeah, I just wanted a change of life. So I just went on stop it. And I haven't looked back. All right. So when you moved here, like, what was your plan? You landed in Bangkok. Where were you going to live? What were you going to do? I, I moved straight to Phuket for two years. I lived in Phuket for two years. Um, that was really dangerous because I was just like partying too much. And that's why I pretty much moved um, from Phuket to Bangkok. I lived in Bangkok for about two years. You moved to Bangkok for less partying? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, would you believe that? Yeah. I, I've never lived in Phuket. I visited, Yeah. but I've basically been in Bangkok for like four or five years now, so I, I don't really know the difference. Yeah. Yeah, Patong's pretty crazy. Okay. But it's okay I guess if you're living in Patong. Yeah, I lived in Patong for like pretty much the whole two years. So it's just like every night. And the amount of money I would have spent... It must have been crazy. Like, so, you know, some nights you've got to spend 10, 15,000. Do you know what I mean? Just, hmm. And so I moved to Bangkok. And, uh, yeah, and a bit, funny enough, I partied more in Bangkok than I did in... So then I just had to say, I'll oh, stop it. You know, this is... You're going to kill yourself if you keep living like this. And then um, that's when I moved to Hua Hin, Hua Hin. Right. And I met Som. So how did you figure out Hua Hin? How did, like... I don't not know. many foreigners move there, I think. Not not many young guys. I see a lot of older guys retire yeah, there. Yeah, a lot of older guys go there. Well, P Passio didn't um, interest me. Um, it's not kind of my scene. Um, look, it's good, you know, for, with your mates for a couple of days. But I think after a week, you really want to get out of there, I think. Um, I just like the idea of Wahin. You know, it's only two and a half hours from Bangkok. So if I still do want the Bangkok... It's only two and a half hours drive. Right. So if I still want to go out with my friends in Bangkok and have a crazy weekend, I can. And then go back yeah. and have a normal life during the week. 
Yeah. So a lot of guys, a lot of guys ask me in the comments on YouTube or on Instagram, and they want to know kind of what the differences are between some different cities like Bangkok, Phuket, Pattaya. What would you say are the main differences between living in Bangkok and living in Hua Hin for a foreigner? Oh, the relaxed lifestyle. Like even tonight, just, just moving around Bangkok is so hard. And it's just, and the noise pollution, it just doesn't stop. And, you know, it's great to have for a couple of years, but, and I wasn't working here, you know, I was a, a, an expat living in Bangkok. I didn't need to be because I wasn't working in an office or, you know what I mean? I thought, because well, I was living at Pechaburi, you know, right. Asok. Yeah, yeah. And I was at the Pechaburi, uh, no, it was at Asok MRT station once. And I had to wait like an hour and a half. For like a train because there's I, so many people there's so many yeah. people that's and, a really busy part of the city yeah and it was like five o'clock on a monday and it was raining and it was just like and i was sitting in line and i'm like there's uh, what am i doing yeah i think a lot of people who haven't been to thailand they're not familiar with here they don't realize how big bangkok is oh it's huge i mean it's like 10 million people it's like new york city it's i think it's actually bigger than new york city population wise yeah so it's there's no no joke here if you're coming from like a small or like a medium-sized city wherever in europe then this is definitely going to be a a step up in terms of like pace of life so yeah it makes sense that it's not not for everyone and you probably can't do it forever like that no but i look i love bangkok i'd move back here for the right if i you know if i a career move or something came, the job came up or I don't know, something came up that it just offered too good to refuse. I'd move back here, but if I don't, didn't have to be. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So how did you find Hua Hin though? And I'm just curious because I literally... I uh, watching YouTube videos. Okay. Uh, there was a guy called, oh, I can't remember his name now. Um, yeah, I can't remember his name. But just watching YouTube videos. Had you started your channel? No. No, not until you moved out there. No, cause I, and then I moved there and I thought, oh, shit, this place is boring. <laughs> right. And I thought, yeah, I've got to do something. That's one of the interesting things about your channel, if people haven't seen it, is you kind of have a different perspective than the typical people in Bangkok, Pattaya, Phuket. You know, like there's not too many people that kind of live out out of this big cities like you do. So it's kind of interesting to see what life is like there. Yeah. So w- why did you start the channel? Was there a reason or you just were bored? I just bored. Yeah. And I thought, well, if I don't fix something, if I don't keep myself busy, I'm just going to end up drinking a lot and partying again. And, mm. and you hadn't met some yet? No. we. I, I think I started the channel like a week after I met some. <laughs> <laughs> oh, after you, after you met her? A week after, yeah. Oh, okay. Because remember I turned up with that laptop <laughs> from, from Apple and I went... Oh, we're going to start a YouTube channel. And that was it. Oh, and and I had friends. So there's a very good friends of mine, um, Jay and Sasha. They, uh, they've they got a channel called Eight Miles From Home. And they were documenting or, or vlogging Thailand. And, um, and I reached out to them and said, oh, can you guys, like, give me some advice? And they said, oh, we're actually moving to Wahin next week. So we can uh, hook up, and, and he pretty much Jay pretty much took uh, took me under his wing, pretty much, and uh, showed me everything like how to film, how to edit. Um, so I'm very thankful of that. So, um, but you know, YouTube channels, it's good. It you know, it, something to do really. Yeah, for me, uh, before I moved to Thailand, I didn't do anything with YouTube, but it's kind of a fun r- excuse to do things that you maybe wouldn't yeah. normally do because you know, sometimes you just get so complacent. You just want to do the same things over and over again. You meet new people. You it gets try out of your comfort zone. Yeah. 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 Like we probably wouldn't have, you know, linked up and done anything if it wasn't for no. YouTube. So it's a good reason for I've that. I've met a lot of people through my channel and I'm very thankful for that. So you are one of the people that was here before COVID. So in my mind, it's kind of like three groups of people, the people that were in Thailand before COVID, the people that came during COVID, and the people that came after COVID. You're definitely in the before group. Oh, yeah, sure. What have you seen change be- since before and now after? It's got more expensive. I know that. Since COVID, COVID wasn't too bad, but I think straight after COVID, it's got a lot more expensive. Mm. Um, not much, really. 
I'm quite surprised actually how the tyres have actually adapted from going through two years of just pure shit of not having any tourism, pretty much having to close their businesses to actually rebound. And this is why they call the place the land of smiles because, you know, but a lot of countries, it's just not Thailand, a lot of countries have actually managed to rebound after that awful situation, but... Yeah, so we went down to Hua Hin a few weeks ago, and I had never been there before, so I don't know what it was like before, but I thought it was really quiet, especially for a Saturday night. Well, that's normal. Do you think that's normal? Like, when I first moved to Hua Hin, it was busy. Wouldn't you say? Six years? In the past five. When the, when the Thai Bart got really strong, just before COVID, Thai Bart went really strong, especially against the US dollar, I mean the Australian dollar. And the UK. So that was turning a lot of people off coming. Because, you know... Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. so we... we uh, when we came down, we went to... What's that street? Soy Bintabat? That's yeah. like the main walking street bar area. Is it is that the... Ex- <laughs> is that is that the nightlife there? Or is there no, more? No, there's more. You've got, you've got... Uh, we've got Soy Bintabat. Yeah. Which is just like your normal, like... Thai beer bars. Yeah, who hangs out there? What kind of people? <laughs> um, tourism, I think. Tourists mostly. Okay. Because because it's close to the hotels, it's close to the Hilton. They just walk over. Um, some some hangs out there. <laughs> no, you go to the Panama, don't you? <laughs> yeah. What's the Panama? The Panama bar. Okay. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. like where all the... The local girls go. Oh, that's that sounds- <laughs> 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 no, but yeah, you know I mean, like, you some guys there with their girlfriends. Yeah, yeah. And like, they have a girls' night out. They're going to Saturday. Oh, yeah. So, but like, but you you've got soy ninety four, which is m- more beer bars. Honestly, there's too many bars in Hua. You know? Oh yeah, when well, we were there, it was super quiet, so I I couldn't understand well, how they stayed well, in business. Another, well, they tried. Cl- pretty much moving soy bintabat out with and that's where you've got soy 94 now and you've got like 100 i think there's a 140 beer bars in like a one block radius and but you haven't got the population so it's madness right the people that visit there for tourism like what are the main reasons they go is it for golf or the beaches or what plenty of reasons family i think it's a bit of a family destination Oh, right, right. Um, Definitely more than Pattaya, right? Yeah, the, the, my, my, so. <laughs> my impression of it is that it's kind of like a quieter, more family-friendly oh, definitely, Pattaya. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's my... Yeah, most definitely. Because uh, you've got to take into account, it's the king's r- r- weekend residence. Right. So they're not going to allow like go-go girls dancing there around poles. and. Yeah, like in Pattaya, you walk down the street, you'll yeah. see girls waiting under coconut trees yeah you know yeah, yeah. you know i didn't see that in no Portland. no you won't see yeah. that because it's it's you know attached to the royal family so. right right okay it makes sense it makes sense um for people like visiting thailand you've probably seen so many foreigners come what do you think like the the biggest mistakes they make are when they first come here as holiday or no if they're moving here like a lot of guys want to retire here they want to work remotely here they just want to be here just like you i don't know um it's a hard question (laughs) because i feel like thailand has a a bit of a reputation for like especially men coming here and then just like going off the rails yeah i'd say something like that or catching up with a bar girl no offense but you know i mean a lot of people do that and then they find out the hard way, don't they? So, yeah. Have you ever had any friends that like got into a situation? I hear like it that? all the way. <laughs> I don't know. I don't hear it often because I'm yeah, not kind yeah. of in that scene. But uh, I've heard some amazing stories. Yeah, like what? Tell me something. Um, well, I was at a bar here at the game. Do you know the oh game? yeah, we were there recently. Yeah, you know, sick of it. Nana, Nana. It's, a, it's around Soy Eleven. Yeah, Nana. just downstairs there. Yeah. yeah. And I was sitting there one day. I was waiting for a friend or something. And this guy comes up to me and goes, oh, she took me everywhere then. Like, he was drunk. And, like, maybe I had a few. And I, I was like, what are you talking about? What are you? And he kept on. And I said, what are you talking about, man? And he goes, oh, I met this girl in Britannia and she's taking all my money. <laughs> and I went, and it was a lot of money. It was about, I think it was 
that two or three million baht or something. Like he'd brought her a condo, he brought her a car, and she kicked him out. She rang the police because he put everything in her name. Right. And uh, he put everything in her name. I thought, well, you're an idiot for a start. So she just rang up police and said, oh, he just, I, mean, I want him kicked out. And the police just turned up and kick him out. I don't care if yeah. he paid for it or not. If her name's on that lease or that that green book or yeah. blue book. Have you have you heard of this uh, this guy on YouTube? But, but sorry, let me finish. Oh, yeah. Um, and I said to him, I said, well, how old are you? And he said, oh, 62. And I said, how old was she? And she was 22. Yeah. <laughs> why, why are you laughing? <laughs> she was 22. And I said, well, mate, I said, that was a business relationship. That was, I said, you used her for sex, obviously. And I said, she used you for money. And that's, that's a business relationship. And you, and surely he knew what he was getting himself. Because he would, I said, would you get a 22 year old back in England? And he said, no. And I said, well, there's your answer. It was a yeah, bit, I'm assuming he didn't look like George Clooney either. No, no, it's just your typical sex pat kind of look. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that kind of, it's just not how naive he was. It was like, well, she's not going to 66 year old for, for free, is she? Right. It is weird how like some guys get off the plane here and it's like they think they're in dreamland. Like the rules don't oh, apply. Yeah. yeah. They say that a lot of people leave their brain on the plane. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you laughing over there? Do you ever hear stories like this? Yeah. Like I mean, we were watching uh, this, this new guy we discovered the other day. Channel is uh, Tie Talk with Dan. And he basically just reads emails from guys that have situations like this right. and kind of gives his opinion. Um, but... I thought it was interesting for Ying to hear like some of the stories from the guy's point of view. Yeah. Because like the craziest stuff happens. Like, I mean, honestly, this, what that guy said is like pretty common. I think like guy oh, comes happened. here, meets a young girl, buys a bunch of stuff, puts it in her name and then it just gets taken. So Cause they, cause they, they fall in love and, and I feel sorry for him in a way, but I don't in another way. It's like, well, if you're that stupid, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, in your opinion, you've been in a relationship for a little while now, at least, right? Eight years, isn't it? How long time? It's a, it's a short amount of time. <laughs> what do you think the secret is to being in a successful relationship with a Thai woman? Um, don't argue. <laughs> it's really just that simple? Don't no. argue? I may. <laughs> look at, look at I like her. how she just, she won't say anything, but she's just looking at you. <laughs> I because I'm like, uh, no, I don't know. Just be yourself. But I don't know. It's it, it's different with every girl. Mm. You know what I mean? Do do like cultural issues ever come up? Like just you're not used to something, she's not used to something, and then you have like an argument about it. Not really. We don't really argue that much. If we have an argument, she. I either walk off or she walks off. But then half an hour later, it's like, oh, who cares? You know what I mean? It's back to normal. Um, but if they're, I'll tell you one thing. If they're hungry, feed them quick. No, I'm serious. That's a, that's number one rule. If they're like that gremlin, you know that movie, Gremlins? Yeah. And that said, don't feed them after midnight or something. I don't know. I've never seen it. <laughs> oh, it's a movie. Yeah. Yeah. Or they turned into like this big uh, animal or beast. Like, uh, but with a tiger, if they're hungry, you feed them immediately. <laughs> <laughs> you don't so, wait till midnight. Some, where are you from? You, you pull the mic up, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can help me. <laughs> <laughs> where, uh, <laughs> where, where are you from, some? <laughs> Come on, <laughs> relax. Come on. We're going to for dinner. <laughs> Samut Pakan. <laughs> Where? Near Bangkok. Oh, Samut Pakan. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So not not too far. So I was gonna ask, like, have you been to her hometown and like, yeah, what was that like? Yeah, but met a family. It's, it's not. It's not so far. No, it's just not far. It's about thirty yeah. minutes from here. Yeah. So because like I have a friend who's dating someone from Isan. Mm-hmm. And, you know, coming from America, not spending that much time in Thailand yeah. and then going up, up country. Yeah. That's going to be like a wild experience. Yeah, like, yeah. Perspective changing. But I mean, I don't know what that area is like because I've never been there, but it's not that far from Bangkok. So you should yeah. go up there. Uh, maybe, maybe I will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been to Kong Ken. 
Oh, oh yeah? yeah. Why'd you go? Well, my first girlfriend that I met in. Uh. <laughs> oh. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> now her name is uh. What was her name? I don't know. <laughs> I just have to know them all. I don't know. I don't know, whatever her name was. Okay. Um, but I went up to like, she was like, there was like nothing. Like her mother, she was like 70 and she was still washing clothes on like the wooden board mm. with the grate. So I went out and I brought like a washing machine and a fridge, but that was the worst thing I could have ever done. Right. Because uh, it was just money then. They just wanted money. It was just like, oh, she said, oh, I want a new digital camera. And I brought her one, and that's when digital cameras were like, like brand new. Right? Oh, like because you, you would, couldn't tell it wasn't on your phone. Anyway, like the next weekend, I said, "Where's your camera?" He said, "I gave it to my sister because she wanted one." And I'm like, "Fuck, that was it." That is a weird situation, like foreigners have because you want to give gifts sometimes, yeah. want to be nice, but then they take but, advantage. Yeah, that's that's kind yeah, of the and that's problem. what I. And that's what I hate just trying to, as soon as that happened, I went, right, well, you're pulling the piss now. Like, I was trying to help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause, you know, you've you've got to help, but then you also, you can't be taken advantage of. Yeah. Do you see yourself staying in Hohen, or do you, would you move somewhere else? Like, up yeah, north I'd or say, wherever? I'm just going to stay there. You want to move? If I was going to move out, I'd move to Bangkok. I feel like I get bored easily. Like, I don't think I could stay in a place for Yeah, I'm years. used to it now. I'm like, I'm... 40, 44. So I'm used to it. I'm, I'm, I want that slow, that slow life now. Yeah. I've done the party shit. So what do your, what does your family think of you coming out here? Because I know like for me, my family hates it. They, th- they, when I first came here, they thought it was the weirdest thing. They thought it was like a phase. Yeah. They just don't really, they don't really get it. So what about you? I haven't spoken to them. Ah. I speak to my sister. Yeah. We kind of had a bit of falling out over that. Um, I think, I don't know, I haven't spoken, we just, uh, I think my mother's, uh, she would have liked me to stay on the Gold Coast, get married, have two girls to, to like an Australian woman and pay tax and do that merry-go-round shit. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm in the same exact boat. <laughs> so, and she, you know, she doesn't really accept, I don't know, we never really got on. We don't. I don't know. That's okay, though. You know. Yeah, it's, I don't know about... So how, how are you finding that? Difficult? Yeah, it, I don't know about where you're from, but like where I'm from, there's definitely like a, a game plan that's given to you, mm. and you need to follow this yeah. step by step. It's like you it's a carousel ride. graduate high school, you go to college, you have to study like one of three things, then you get a certain job, then by a certain age, you're married, have a dog, a, you know, a fence, yeah. whatever. So... Um, well, that's all they know. That's all your parents know. But I get it because, I don't, like, again, I don't know about Australia, but in the U.S., you know, our families immigrated there yeah. and my parents didn't grow up with much. They worked hard to make something of their lives. And now maybe they feel like their their kids are wasting it by just, you know, booking it off to a Southeast Asian country that they know nothing yeah. about. Yeah. And I think I think there's a lot of stereotype of Thailand. Sure. And most of it involves the prostitution side and the the drugs and the bad living and you know i think that's all the lady boys you know what I mean? yeah. and uh, and by all good means like there's a lot of temptation in thailand you've just got to be able to control it yeah i think if you don't have a lot of self-control like oh, if you yeah, like history. to drink a lot do drugs things things like that thailand is not the place for you because it's just it's too easy it's too easy here i think oh absolutely or even road safety like if you're a speed demon, yeah, I mean, don't come here because there's no, it's not like Australia where you can fly up the highway at 160 and no police will chase you. But if you kill someone or you kill yourself, you know. Right. The, the, the rules are definitely different here. And I think a big mistake a lot of foreigners make is they come here and they want Thailand to be like whatever their home country yeah. is. And they will not accept that it's different. You know, when it comes to anything, the laws, the culture, whatever, so... But they, you know, they'll go, they'll go to Phuket and rent motorbikes and ride around the whole island pissed. But they wouldn't do that in a But country. they have a mask on though, the mask protection. <laughs> yeah, but they wouldn't do that. Like they wouldn't do that in Australia. Right, right. And they wouldn't do that in America, I'm sure. Or right. even if. But they seem to come to like, you know, we're in Bali or we're in Thailand. 
fuck it, we'll just what we do what we want. Right. And that's where a lot of people do get in the trouble. Have you been to other Southeast Asia countries like Cambodia, Vietnam? Yeah, I've been to pretty much all. I haven't been to uh I mean Hong Kong or Indonesia. Okay. So like I think a lot of people also like Vietnam, but for you, like what's the difference? Why would you prefer Thailand? Um I don't know. I went to Hanoi. I know I went all around to Vietnam actually for a few weeks. Um, Vietnam was nice. I just don't think they like us. Oh, really? Uh, and I've never been. Um, I th- I'm sure the the younger generation do, but the older generation don't. Like the well, I went to Hanoi, and I could tell like the old, like the you know the the Ma and Pa shop sellers and uh-huh. stuff. Because I think it was a lot of they've got a still a lot of shit going on from what happened with the war and. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, oh, not a, I'm sure they don't hate us, but it's, I don't know. I just find Thailand more welcoming. Sure. Yeah. When I, I had a friend in college, he was a year ahead of me and shout out to Ed if he ever sees this. So, uh, he was graduating a year ahead of me and I said like, okay, what are you going to do? Cause graduation weekend was coming up and he's like, oh, I'm, I'm moving to Thailand. It's like Thailand. Why are you going to Thailand? Like I didn't, I didn't get it. But he was like far ahead of me. Like he already knew he had the whole thing laid out. And sure enough, he, I don't know, he ended up here and I never, I never heard from him again. I, the only thing was uh, a friend ran into him in Vietnam once. So I don't know if he ended up moving there or what. But um, yeah, I, I, I only wish I found out about this place sooner because I didn't come here my first trip until I was like 28. Yeah. And the only reason I came here is because I went to a travel show. And I was trying to figure out where to go. And the, they had all these different countries. And the Thailand booth, they had these like virtual reality goggles. Yeah. And I put those on. <laughs> and I was like. Lady boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was, I was like in a temple. I was in a boat. I was like, oh my God, yeah. I'm going here. And when I got off the plane here, I, was, I immediately like in the first day understood why people like pack up and come here. Like there's just something. Oh, that's good. You got addicted straight away. There's something like special. I, I don't know how to explain it, but there's yeah. like something in the air. Yeah. Even like the smell of Bangkok, I yeah, enjoy. Yeah, right. That shitty, smelly Bangkok. Even like, I don't know, we can't talk. We didn't, we've got an idea. Oh, yeah, we, we have an idea. Yeah, to keep that under wraps. But we can't <laughs> disclose that. But it's an excellent invention. Um, even the, the, the grunge smell of Bangkok, I love I don't love. I'm not going to bath in it. But I think one of the things I love about this place is it's like a little bit like the Wild West. Yeah. You know, like you never know if that motorbike taxi driver is just going to drive up onto the sidewalk and plow people over, you know, and then just keep going. I hope not. Like that can't happen in America. Like yeah. that just won't happen. But here, you know, you never know. So that little bit of excitement, I don't know. I like that. It's a little bit of an addiction, I think. That's why I think I couldn't do Hua Hin. I think Hua Hin is too safe. Uh, I, need, I need a little bit of that I, danger yeah. in my life. Yeah, so I've been there, done that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? How old are you now? I'm 34. Oh, so you're just getting started. I moved to Thailand when I was 32. Yeah. So, well, 31, 32. So, so you pretty much are where I am at back then. Yeah, I'm about f- four or five years in. I, ask you, I think about four or five years. Yeah, about maybe that tenth year mark. You go. I want that slower pace life. Mm, okay, that makes sense. That makes Where would sense. you move to if you could have that slower pace life? I, I don't know. I mean, I like the city. I I don't know. I think I need to explore more. I've yeah. been. I, you know, I I went last year on a motorbike trip or around. Uh, we rented motorcycles and we went around Mae Hong Song in the in the oh, okay, north, yeah. and it was one of the most incredible experiences of my life. Just me and my friend, two motorcycles, a backpack each. And then it was like seven days just on the road. And it's just, we went to places that nobody goes to. Yeah. There's no foreigners. There's people look at you like you're a space alien. And I kind of like being out in the middle of nowhere like that, where people can't find me. You can't be bothered by, you know, whatever. I don't know. It's like you're secluded, but at the same time, if you want to get back into civilization with the okay. way things are today, you have an iPhone. It's not too hard. So I could see you in Chiang Mai, really. Could you, could yeah, you a lot of Americans Mara? go there. I don't know. I didn't like it that much. I thought it was kind of How boring. How long are you there again. for? I've been there a few times, a few days each time. Yeah. I've never... You know, when I first came to Thailand, I actually... I had a plan. And my plan was to just do 30 days here. Um, and I had this idea for this, like, 
YouTube channel. Yeah. I'm giving away all my ideas now. So if someone wants to pick this up and run, <coughs> you can take it. So the idea was going to be, it's going to be called 30 days away. And it was going to be spending 30 days in like different places, Thailand, the Middle East, yeah. Europe, wherever. And what a day in each place. No, no, no. 30 days uh, in that uh, place. In each place. Because right. I had this idea because I, I traveled here on like a, a holiday trip. And I was only here for like a week or two. And I was thinking like, oh, it would be, I mean, it was nice being here, yeah. but it would be cool to like live a little bit more like a local, like get out of the hotels, like, you know, maybe go to some more rural areas. And so I'm like, oh, if I was here for a month, I could kind of like absorb it more. So I landed in Thailand the following year for my one month. And here I am. <laughs> like, yeah, I yeah. never, I didn't go to any other countries. Um, I just you, like have this. You, where have you been in Southeast Asia? Yeah, so I just in Southeast Asia, I've just been to uh, Cambodia and uh, Hong Kong, okay. and I went to Hong Kong before the Chinese stuff okay. a few years ago. So I don't I don't know what it's like now or whatever. I mean, it wasn't. I didn't not like it, but same with Cambodia. I didn't not like it. Yeah. But I like it here a lot better. So. It's Where just, did you go in Cambodia, Angkor Wat? Or? I would, no, I was just in the the capital, Phnom Penh, because uh, I was doing some visa stuff, okay. and it, it was also during COVID. Yeah. And boy, it was that was I was there like a week after they reopened tourist yeah. visas, like less than a week. Yeah. So there were there were like no foreigners. Yeah. Like I'd be walking. They're down, really bad. The yeah. Ones. I was walking down the street, and like there'd be like girls work, working in like a restaurant, and they'd like tap their friend, and they'd be like point because there was there was nobody so um it was an interesting time to be there i think i should go back just to see like what it's like now yeah. but i definitely prefer living here try anchor what have you been to anchor what no no see no. so, yeah, i'm right yeah yeah try i that. just i have a feeling it's, it's just a touristy over, spot, yeah though. that's the thing it's a, but yeah don't go to move there just go to the chest I, I i like i discovered after my first few trips here like i really like going to places nobody is at yeah. Like when I came here on my second trip with my girlfriend at the time, we went up to Chiang Rai to the, the White Temple. And, you know, I saw it in a magazine on the yeah. plane, the White Temple. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so beautiful, majestic and whatever. And then we showed up at noon on like a Tuesday. Yeah. And there's about five million Chinese tourists. <laughs> and it's like, th what am I supposed to do? Like, I, we couldn't even get in to see it. There were so many people. Yeah. So after that, I was like. Well, that's what Anchor Wat was like before COVID. Yeah. There's too many Chinese. Yeah, and they push in front of you. They really, they should be tall. So they, but that's how they. Right, but it's hard to blame people. No, I don't blame them. That's, that's, that's that's the what way they do back home. Yeah, so right. They're, they're surviving. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's if you want to get on that train, you got to push. But you know, just be honest. There are, like I don't blame them because you know, however you grew up, your culture, like it's understandable. But yeah. they also do some funny things. Like I got on a uh, before COVID, I fly it on. Um, I flew on like a lot of Chinese airlines yeah. back to the U.S. And I'll, I'll never forget. I got on the plane, and it was my seat, and then an empty seat, yeah. and then an older woman. And we're just taking off, and I'm just relaxing, falling asleep, and I feel something on my arm, and I look down, and she had put up the armrest and laid down and put her like bare feet, bare feet. On my arm. Oh really? And I was just, like, just like, I was just like, I don't, I don't know. What do you do? You just like. I would have told. Uh, yeah, I'm I'll outnumbered. Get off me. Yeah. <laughs> what would you have done? Would you like that? No. Would you like that song? <laughs> See. Like You're turning so nice. I, I don't know about you, but before I came Especially to. Especially your feet too. That's one thing in Thailand. You don't put your feet on. Yeah. Yeah. You don't put your feet on the armrest. Yeah. You don't put your feet on the armrest. Yeah. You don't put your feet on the armrest. Yeah. You don't put your feet on the armrest. Yeah. You don't put your feet on the armrest. Yeah. You don't put your feet on the armrest. Yeah. You don't put your feet on the armrest. Yeah. You don't put your feet on the armrest. Yeah. You don't put your feet on the armrest. Yeah. You don't put your feet on the armrest. Yeah. You don't put your feet on the armrest. Yeah. You don't put your feet on the armrest. Yeah. You don't put your feet on the armrest. Yeah. You don't put your feet on the armrest. Yeah. You do Tires, because right, it's right. disrespectful. Right. So. I get, but, you know, like a lot of people just bring their home country to here and they don't, yeah, they don't look, think much I'd, about it. But like, yeah, anyway. Before I came here, you know, in America, if you see an Asian person, they're Chinese. It doesn't matter if they're Korean, Thai, they're, ah. they're Chinese. Oh, that's what you thought. Well, that's what every, I mean, it's pretty much what everyone thinks. Maybe now it's changed, but definitely when I was growing up, yeah. Asian person equals Chinese, Chinese person. How, what about Australia? Is it the same or is it? Um, I know you're closer to Asia, so I don't know. Yeah, no, no, I don't know. It's a hard thing to say. I'm sure it happens. But, but once I got here, now that I've been here and I've been around all kinds of different people without even seeing a person's yeah, face, can, yeah. just by how they act, yeah. I can tell, are they Thai, Chinese, Korean, Korean Japanese? It's, they're totally different to me now. 
so yeah that that's that was that's been an interesting experience like being here a few years yeah how that changes oh that's good so anyway. we're gonna go out tonight we're gonna get dinner in a bit so what about you guys yeah are you guys happy to stay in bangkok uh for me yeah what about for ying, ying? we want to stay here Oh, you mean Bangkok? You gonna live here permanently, or you're where? Where I are mean, you from, Ying? Tell everyone where you're from. Uh, Mahasalakam. Province. Where is that? It's close to Kangen. It's in Isan. And wh- okay. when did you come here? What age? Uh, I mean, since I finished the university around 2014. Yeah. Okay, and when you first came here, you were telling me before you worked at like a restaurant or something. Uh the one at restaurant was like. It was like a training job when, you know, when you have like summer from the university and okay, you need yeah. like, yeah, like a part time. And you were telling me how much you got paid. How much did you get paid for that? I mean, around 300 per day, 300, 400, but you That's get normal tips wage, isn't it? That. And you were, you're talking true. about like the tipping culture because here tipping isn't really a thing, but yeah. I, I still don't even un- like kind of understand it. But you were, you were saying like, what did you think about people that gave a tip or didn't give a tip? I mean, I would be happy if they give a tip. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Everyone's it, happy. It feels right? different. And what would when you, you expect? Get would you expect so much? I didn't expect anything, but no, I'm so like happy. 20 baht or 100 baht? Or? But if Thai people go to a restaurant. But that's not a Thai restaurant. Right. But if thing. Thai people go to a restaurant, do they uh-huh. normally give a tip? How does it work? Not really. I mean, no. For me, and don't and if you, <laughs> But if you're, the, if you're the server and a Thai person comes and they buy whatever and they leave and they don't leave anything. Do you feel bad or is it just normal? I mean, if it was a waitress, I mean, maybe I would feel bad. But, <laughs> I but, was there but before. if you're the customer, how do you feel? I mean, like, how do you feel? Yeah. Sometimes I give them, sometimes I don't <laughs> give them. Depends on, like, right. where you do were. You give, do you give tips, Tom? Every time? <laughs> <laughs> no, it depends. Yeah. Look, it depends on the service, really. Yeah. yeah. If I'm happy with something... Even if I'm not happy with something, I'll still normally give a tip, but it just depends. I'm not really big on it, though. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm happy to do whatever. Like, if I go to a hotel and I'm paying 10% tax, and I'm paying another 7%, that's 17% too. Yeah. That's 17%. I don't think I should tip. Yeah. Because not because it's a hotel, because you're paying that 10%. Sure. The thing I don't like in the U.S., again, I don't know how it works in Australia, but in the U.S., they expect... Oh, for you're sure. getting x 20 percent, 20 whatever yeah you, i can understand if that you go to a restaurant and you're not giving like 15 20 percent you are the worst person that's ever walked the face of the earth is that how it is in australia no there's no tip in australia really oh really yeah yeah i don't know so i haven't been there for a while but i've been there for years but no it's not normally i don't it, look it just depends it, it depends what kind of situation you're in financially or yeah well that's one thing i like about here i feel like if i'm giving someone something it's because i want to yeah because i feel like they deserve it yeah you know like uh like i won't take if a taxi driver is great yeah nice and sure takes me there and i'll always tip but if they or that try and re- like turn the meter off or try and bullshit me you know what i noticed if i'm with a girl the taxi drivers really try to get you but if i'm alone and I just speak Thai to them, they're really? usually cool about it. But it's like if they see you with a girl, they feel like they got you. Yeah, like you, right. you're going to pay up. Oh, yeah, because you want to go home. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go home fast. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to go out tonight. We're going to get some dinner at um, one of my favorite places, Oscar. Yeah. Have you been there before? It's on uh, Soy 11. Yeah, friends kind of, uh, a friend started it, actually. Started, designed it all, and... Yeah, I've been a few it, times. You told me it's the same guy from Sing Sing Theater. Right? Um, he he was attached, but he's pretty much, um, he's just concentrating on his business of Sing Sing and restaurants now. Got it. But okay. his, his best friend runs. Uh, I went to their fourth birthday party. No, that was pretty crazy. How long has it been open? I don't know about ten. It must be about ten, eight, ten years now. Okay, like it's on Soy Eleven, which is in Na Na, and actually before COVID, I never went to. No, nah, no. Nah. I basically stayed away from there. But during COVID, there was there was none of those tours because it's got kind of a reputation. If you haven't been to Bangkok before, the the people that go to Nana, nah, the customers, not everybody, but a certain kind of customer tends to be around that area. And it wasn't my thing. But during COVID, there's nobody. So I kind of explored it a little more. 
I found some spots like Oscar or, you know, yeah. some of the bars around there. So it's not all bad. But did you, there must be like plenty of stuff around here, isn't there? Ekamai? There is, but I... I've, is it Japanese or in China? A lot of Japanese, but I've been living in like this neighborhood basically yeah. since I got here. Yeah. So, you, you know, you just want to explore. Have you explored at all? Yeah, oh yeah, I've been all around this Tongla, Ekamai, yeah. But they've built a lot of new stuff since since COVID, so I feel like... I yeah, know. I think there's always new buildings going up here. Yeah, we were talking about condos before mm. and uh, like whether you should buy a condo or not. I don't know how anybody can buy a condo here and make money on it because it's, you buy it and then they literally like the next year there's another new one next door and then mm, the next year another new one and then there's always a new one. There must be someone, but I was thinking that in the taxi after that conversation that we had, but there must be someone buying them. Otherwise, they wouldn't keep building them, would they? You know I mean, someone must be buying these units. Are they? Because I feel like a lot of the units are Well, they just can't be empty. sitting empty. Well, there's a place on, I think, um, Soy 24 near Prom Pong. Yeah. I forgot the name of it. Um, but it's like four huge towers, like huge towers. Yeah. And I stayed there in an Airbnb once. And basically, it's like 90% empty. Yeah. And a lot of it is Chinese owners. Yeah. And they're, they're just operating it like a hotel, like an Airbnb. Like all the rooms are on Airbnb. And there's like very, very few actual owners because nobody's buying them. Yeah. But I don't know how it's changed. I don't know after COVID or whatever. So I think there's, a, they must be selling them because would, there wouldn't be money in it, would there? People wouldn't be building them. I don't know. I mean, maybe they're just like speculating on the future or whatever. But yeah. yeah. All right. Well, anything else? What do you got coming? Oh, I know what I wanted to ask you. You guys are in Bangkok because you're working on another YouTube channel, right? Yeah, we've started a, a cooking channel. It's called Something's Cooking. It's pretty much on basis around uh, street food, um, just like your local vendors. Um, it's gonna. It's pretty raw. Like you see how people operate during a day, um, open and closing. Some interviews them in Thai, and we've translated. Right, that's great because like what one of the best parts by far of Bangkok and Thailand is all the street food. Oh, it's amazing! Just the culture around you. I mean, you walk out in the morning, in like early in the morning or at in the evening, and it's just like a buffet on yeah. the street. And these people work so hard. I mean, I feel so much for them. They and do. They have to get up so early. They're up so late. They work hard. And you know, a lot of them don't speak English, so it's good that yeah. So and some you know, you organize the interviews, don't you? You call them up. And say we're coming to film. <laughs> do you do you find that a lot of these vendors they're they like being filmed or yeah, they're afraid I think, or I think it um it depends how you approach them. Yeah, I mean we always phone them up first or we always let yeah. them know we're coming. I think when you just turn up and you're just like ah, the camera in their face, they mm. And I think it also helps with some right. I think if I was a foreigner, yeah, yeah. It's probably not many would have said yes, because it was like, but some sweet talks I'm in, and I come in, I, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it's working well, and and I enjoy, I'm really enjoying it, actually. It's it's showing me a different side of Thailand that I wouldn't normally see. Like, today we were up at what time? 5.30? 5.30, we went to the markets at Ceylon, and this, this line, you can put this clip in. I'll give you the clip so you can put it in now. Of just people just lining up. I counted about 50 or 60 deep. And they're lining up for this. I was going to bring you some. It's like, you know, that rice cracker? What's it called, Tom? And it's got like. Hmm? Oh, yeah, I know that. It's got like sugar on it. Yeah. And there's 60 people lining up for this. It's just like rice cracker. You know those round things? Yeah. But she smashes them all up and she pours like all golden sugar over it. And it would at 70 for hours. It was just 70 people deep. So that video will be up soon if you want to go check it out. <laughs> we uh we both did a video with poi the banana roti oh, lady yeah, yeah. so that that Hello, was poi. kind of uh it's one of those things that i don't know you just stumble upon it one day i was eating dinner here and i saw this like kind of like documentary video on her just just following her from when she wakes up to till she goes to bed yeah and it's really interesting for me as a foreigner to see a, like these th local thai people how how much they hustle, you know, every day. She gets up at three or four in the morning. Yeah, to buy all the ingredients, then comes back and like preps it, yeah. and then 
brings her cart out every day. It's unbelievable to me. So I told Ying, I said, we're going to see this this lady. And that video did quite well, didn't it? Yeah. How yeah. many did it get? Uh, I think it's about 10,000. Yeah, that's very good. That's... And I'm happy for her because for what, you know, whatever reason, I know, oh, she, I know she looks good, but it's not just that she looks good. She has such a friendly, warm yeah. personality. Yeah. And it's such a good representation, I think, of like the people in Thailand. Yeah. And it's just crazy. Like I, we showed up and she has an iPhone set up yeah. and she's like live streaming herself. Yeah, she's got her uh, own channel now. And I'm like, wow, what a time to be she alive. She had like 100,000 subscribers in like two or three months. Yeah. And good on her. Her life's changed. Yeah. I think that's amazing. Because there was a stage there where they were going to kick her off, kick her off the pavement. The really? Council. Do Do you think the other food vendors don't like her now? No, not at all. Well, she brings people in, doesn't she? That's so true. That, that lover. Yeah, you know I mean, because they come and see her, or like that pad Thai girl that's selling pad Thai in the corner. You know, they'd buy. She's quite famous now too for her own, for just selling pad Thai. Really? So, you know, it, it, and like she doesn't come across as that person poish like i think she just wants to give like so master you just asked the questions isn't it like that and like like how many you sell it and she had no questions answering them um and that video got over like a million views so she's very open like how many did you sell you remember no you can i but it's a lot it's about four kilos or something of good honor yeah she's got a family she's got two kids i believe yeah and a thai husband so that helps them out and that's like one thing that i noticed from the west or from america is like i don't see women that look like her working as hard as her day in and day out where i'm from (laughs) like they nor i don't know what they do but I, i don't see anybody like this like so i really respect i respect the hustle so yeah, it was cool to talk to her. I think she got like a... I've, had, I've gone through all her videos. But some videos got 40 million views. Not not of her channel, though, that people have put yeah, out. Yeah. I, th- I think she's been viewed over 200 million times. Like, that's, that's just astronomical. You know what I mean? Some person just selling Rossi. But it must have been crazy. Like, there was a day where nobody knew her. Mm. And then, like, she's one day star. someone came by and filmed something. And then that's... What started she's been the... on Thai TV? She's she's everywhere. Yeah, so it's great. Well, yeah, I'm happy for her. And it's good that because nice. uh, yeah, it's good that she's got her own YouTube channel. She's making her own content now yeah. that she's getting money. She's from. in charge of it. Yeah, yeah. So I wish her all the best. Cool. So we're gonna hop out now. We're gonna get dinner. Yeah. Are you hungry? Uh, so? How was your first podcast? Was it good? You didn't say much. Some, some was super. She walked in. I don't <laughs> think she realized <laughs> the setup in here, like how intense it was gonna look. Because you're just oh. filming on an iPhone normally. Yeah, right? I, don't, I, don't I just got, on an iPhone. I don't do any of this and here stuff. we've got lights. This we've is got, all like we've got three, three cameras, cameras and lights. <laughs> and I, I'm just an iPhone guy. <laughs> but some walked in. Did you think there's a porno or something? No, it looks like karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> karaoke. It does, it does look like karaoke, but I won't be singing. All right. So before we get out of here, check out Johnny. Thank there you. is something happening well, thank on you YouTube. Very much for having me. Check out Something's Cooking. We're going to link it below. And check out Ying's channel. We're going to link that below too. Uh, If you guys have any questions or comments, drop them in the description, below the description down there. And we will see you in the next video.